What's going on, bro? Assalamualaikum. Assalamualaikum. Waalaikumsalam. Look, look at that beard, man. Wow. Wow. Let's go. Man. How are you, man? Good, good. Those are the outtakes, man. Yeah. yeah. Really posh. Assalamu alaikum. What's going on, guys? Welcome to my channel. Wow, you live well, really high up, man. So you can see, I've got a bunch of stuff. I'm so tired, man. Coffee. Yeah, yeah, every morning. That's that's what I that's what I drink. What's going on guys? Welcome to Amigos Code. Today I'm joined by Natalia. So Natalia, she's a tech recruiter, and the purpose of this video is to give you the tips and advice for you to succeed when it comes uh, to apply for jobs, whether um, you are a bootcamp student or you want to switch careers. Uh, or if you're a professional as well, so if you want to basically apply for your next tech role, Natalia, she's here to uh, help us um, with all, all of those questions. So uh, uh, do you want to introduce yourself, Natalia? Yeah, sure. Um, so my name is Natalia and I'm working as a recruiter, um, mostly for uh, for a tech field. So I'm, I'm, I'm covering end-to-end -end recruitment process for um, different companies and different clients. And um, yeah, I'm mostly working for for tech roles for tech uh, departments. Cool. Uh, what what is like being a tech recruiter? It's nice and tough at the same time. Right. <laughs> you need to get a, a lot of understanding about what you're talking about with the candidates and with the clients, and of course with the hiring manager. But it's yeah, it's fun. Cool. So uh, yeah, so one of the things that I wanna I wanna um, touch on this video is. So a lot of my students, they are students that um, either bootcamp students or people that want to get into tech, basically. They want to switch their careers, right? So one of those things in common with all those students is that they don't have a degree, mm -hmm. right? So uh, how, how do they go about in terms of applying for jobs and what strategies that they should be using to secure their next job? Mm -hmm. Um, so what we what we're trying to do, um, and with with all of my um, my colleagues from from the from the recruitment companies, we're just trying to educate hiring manager that this is not necessary um, requirements, or it should not necessarily be requirements um, to get a degree and then go to the tech roles, uh, because in the end of the day, it's just what the skills and your expertise, it's what matters the most, what should matter the most, not necessarily the degree. Um, and also the other thing is, I think it's also worth to mention that not a lot of people, not a lot of young people um, can afford high degree because especially in here, it's quite expensive. Right. Um, so um, uh, there's always a way to um, to get in and there's always a way to, to start your career in the uh, in tech industry, even without degree. Even, sure. even without yeah. degree, right? So do you just say, like in terms of, um, if I was to say, like, is, is it much, much more harder for someone that has, hasn't got a degree mm -hmm. or someone that has a degree? Like, do you have a preference when it comes to someone that applied for a job, for example? It depends on the, on, on the role and, of course, most likely depends on the hiring manager as well and, and the company, the clients. But um, I wouldn't say it's, it's not possible. Mm -hmm. um, and especially right now, I think... People and and hiring managers they they just trying to focus themselves on finding the right candidate with um with skills rather than degrees. So at that point, sometimes degree it's not necessary. Right. Okay. So so then how do I so for example let's say that um, I don't have a degree right how do I showcase my skills to um, recruiters or when applying for jobs how do how do I showcase showcase my my skills right because you know most people what they do is actually um, whether if they go to boot camps is like three months, which is three to six months, which mm -hmm. is not enough to show showcase like the actual skills, mm -hmm. or people are just learning on their own, right? So, what would you say like is the best way of showcasing the skills, um, and also how do you craft your CV 
just to just to come across like mm-hmm. you are someone that uh, potentially uh, can be given a chance. Mm-hmm. Yeah, of course. So um, in terms of um, in terms of working as a developer, of course, yeah, like you 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 know that um, uh, as well that it's not something you can become overnight. It's not something uh, you can just go for it and just immediately immediately become a developer. It's it usually takes time. Yeah. Um, but also more and more our clients they um, they um, they trying to introduce different programs for the students, different programs for apprenticeship programs, for school leavers, for people, even for people who are just trying to rejoin. Mm-hmm. Um, so people who had um, a little bit of gap in employment, they're just trying to get back on the job market and we're just trying to support them to, to do so. Um, and also the other thing is um, more and more our clients, they are focusing on um, qualification training. So once you're going to get even the entry role in tech industry, there's a lot of imp- opportunities inside and outside as well, like training, qualification and some um, different programs outside. So if you're passionate about it, you, you're always going to find a way to, um, to learn and get a job. Right. So one, one thing that I like there is that you said um, you actually support people that don't have the degree yeah. and, and basically they can have like these qualifications right so a lot of mm-hmm. people think oh um if i don't have a degree then you know that's it like my my chances are so so tiny mm-hmm. but that that's not the case right of course not and i i found that a lot of candidates they are a little bit shy because they they feel like they are they are they are compete with people with degree mm-hmm. which from from our perspective it's like if you don't have degree and you still have skills and qualification it means for us that you are much more determined. You right. you are putting so much effort because, compared to the to the um, candidates who um, who went to university, you need to put much more effort to learn um, to learn new skills and get the knowledge by yourself, and most likely doing your full time job somewhere else. So it's actually really impressive, and this is what we're trying to educate hiring managers as well. This is what we should be focusing on on people who. Um, who are really uh, motivated and who are who have self um, uh, self learning and um, who are just passionate about it. Right. So, guys. So, did you listen to that? So, I actually tell you um, quite often that you have to put in the work. I know it's not easy sometimes if you have a job um, or if you are um, studying on your own. It's not easy, right? So, nothing. It's, it's easy um, in in this world, right? And if you put in the work, as Natalia said, it is possible. So one way that I, w- I would say, like, if you are alone on this journey or you feel like um, just on your own is not sufficient, I would say join a community, right? So Amigos Code community. So uh, I actually have a community of over 20,000 people. And this is where people come together and learn from each other. So that way you don't feel alone, right? And um, sometimes it's more about that motivation, right? So waking up. And uh, if you learn Python, for example, or Java, for example, uh, it can be like, uh, I know, I know, like it's, it can be difficult for you to say, or actually it can be easy for you to say, you know, uh, I can't be bothered to do that, right? But if you have like-minded people um, on the same journey, then you actually get that, um, that uh, drive, that motivation for, for you to move forward, right? And I feel like, um yeah a lot of people missed on miss on that and um the worst thing that you can do is actually start right and then find that it's a little bit difficult and then just just give up because you don't have that drive um so yeah so and in terms of um getting your cv right so i think this is one of the, those things where a lot of people don't know what to put on their yeah. cv right so what would you recommend uh, for them to put on, on their CV? So <laughs> just before you give me the answer, so I, I always tell my students, right, use, for example, portfolio. So every single coding challenge that you do, every single project that you do, mm-hmm. have it on your GitHub. So GitHub is a, it's a great place where you can showcase your, your portfolio. Um, but yeah, so from... From that, what else mm-hmm. do, do you think it's it's important for candidates to put? Should, should they put like the, the previous work experience, which is not related to tech, or 
Because how 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 do you mm-hmm. how do you look at it? Um, it depends if someone is just brand new, fresh, fresh new in the tech industry, in the tech in the tech world. I would say definitely put previous experience because at some point we're just looking for if you don't have specific. Let's say if you don't have uh, um, the programming language, you um, you you already expert in at the moment. You're just trying to get to get your foot in. Uh, I would say yeah, absolutely, definitely put your previous experience because at some point we need to find something we can transfer into their specific role. So right. um, sometimes it's not not everything is that obvious. Sometimes you just need to read through the lines, and this is what we do. If we if we don't find someone with um, with specific programming language or, or like or any other skills we are actually looking for, we're just trying to look for something else and trying to transfer it to the role. And right. that that also happens quite often because I think it's 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 also worth to um, to say out loud that um, we we we're looking for people, we're looking for candidates with specific key requirements. But most likely, we're not going to find the perfect candidates who is going to just tick off all the boxes. So in that case, like. Of course, everyone is welcome to apply, and uh, we're just gonna go through a quick chat. And we we also are looking for people who have um, specific attitudes. It's also quite important to remember. Cool. Um, and in terms of so now that you have your CV, how do you go about in applying for for these jobs? Do you do you have like a place that you recommend? Um, I usually just say people like LinkedIn. And it's then, really powerful, so right. I, yeah, I would definitely say LinkedIn. Um, if we talk about the tech role specifically, there's another platform you can use, like a financial career. Uh, we like all, like myself and a lot of uh, my colleagues, they um, they using this to search for a candidate as well. That, so those two platforms are definitely they uh, they still quite powerful in the market and job market. Um, uh, just make sure that your profile on LinkedIn is uh, it's quite clear and concise and, and you know we know exactly what you what you're looking for as well. Mm-hmm. Um, that's that's for sure. And cool. also if you if you have specific company you would like to work for, mm-hmm. uh, follow the company, do your research. It's it it's quite basic things, but I think that that's gonna give you this opportunity to um, to have a first initial conversation with someone from the from the company as well. Nice. And the um... Do you often get like people sending you messages? Oh uh, yeah, that's yeah. <laughs> or, or or is it more the way around you getting? It's it's both ways to be fair. Like, but like at this moment, uh, the job market is very candidate market at the moment. So right. yeah, so there's a lot of roles people are there's um there's a lot of movement tendency. So people are moving from from one company to another a lot. Oh really? Uh, yeah. So right mm. now it's just more of the uh, right. this tendency. Is it, it, is it... It's quite hot right now. Oh, for, is for it hot, right? Yeah. Okay. Is it be, so? Is it because of COVID or? I think so. Yeah. Right. So, guys, have you heard that? So, don't be shy. Apply to companies. And one other thing that I, I also advise as well is, um, so myself, like I, I don't use LinkedIn. Mm-hmm. I I try and stay away of LinkedIn because I don't I don't want people to send me messages and and whatnot. Um, so I always apply directly to the mm-hmm. companies that I want. So. It's it's also good if you have like, you know, the vision, right? So what company that you want to work for? Because because yeah. sometimes people don't have a clue of the company; they just want to get a job, right? Mm-hmm. So I think I think if you focus on on one company and get you can correct me if, if I'm wrong, but I think if you focus on on one company, then I think you have more chances of impressing and show that you are really like interested in the company yeah. whereas if you apply left right and center yeah. it can be like a little bit yeah. difficult right so what's your take on that should they apply directly more, more directly or just apply like to a bunch of companies and just hope that someone will, will take them well, I, w- I would say just think about the list of the all companies you would like you would like to work for, mm-hmm. and maybe just make the separate list. Why would you like to work for for the company X? Um, because at some point we we gonna we we gonna know we we gonna want to know why do you want to work for us? That yeah. that's definitely the question is gonna come through um, the candidates from from recruiter or on the on the later stage of the interview process. They definitely gonna ask you why you wanna work. For them and i know it's it's quite cliche but that kind of question is definitely gonna come right okay so yeah so it's good uh, for you to know the company 
that's they wanna, that, that's, they wanna, for, that's for sure. Or, or the industry, the, the industry, right? The industry some as well. industries are really similar, but you have like different competitors. Yeah. So, yeah, or either the industry or yeah. the the actual company. Uh, cool. So uh, thanks, Natalia. This was uh, really helpful. Um, yeah. So guys, if you haven't subscribed, uh, go ahead and subscribe. Let me know what you thought about this uh, video. Uh, as I said, I'm going to be doing like interviews with people in tech, recruiters, software engineers, uh, just to give an insight of how you can go and uh, progress in your career. And uh, as you know, Amigos Code is all about inspiring, inspiring you guys uh, so that you can, uh, who knows, build the next uh, big thing. And I would love to be part of it. Um, if you're not part of the Amigos Code community, go ahead and join over 20,000 people. And uh, yeah, comment down below and um, I'll catch you in the next one. Assalamu alaikum. Cool. So you can be like really smart, right? But if you don't have the soft skills, then you have a problem, yeah. right? So this is what I want to address in this video uh, because I feel it's, it's very important that, you know, having the technical skills is good, but also the other side of things, which is like, how do you get along with people if you are a good fit? how how that that plays in an interview right so maybe if you could you know um share with us um you know why it's important mm -hmm. and then i'll uh, ask, i'll throw you some questions along the way so what wh why why do you think it's 